What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to find the missing angle of a triangle. And I'm gonna do that by going through a very easy example, a medium example, and then a more difficult example. So the first thing I think is, I had to start with this one, and that is gonna be your most, your most basic understanding of angles of a triangle, which comes up over and over and over again, which is gonna be all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I think it was just, I had to do this one. Um, I think it's really, really important that students understand this. It comes up time and time again, no matter what class you are in, that uh, you need to be able to use this knowledge to be able to solve for a missing angle, okay? So in this case, in this triangle here, um, I have three angles and um, two of them though are known and I have one unknown. So again, all the angles in a triangle add up to 100 degrees. If you understand that information, you then what you need to do for any kind of similar triangle here is you just need to go ahead and create an equation. So in this case, I can say 60 degrees plus 78 degrees plus A is equal to 180 degrees. Now I can just go ahead and solve for A. So 60 plus 78 is going to be 138 degrees plus A is equal to 180 degrees. Um, subtract 138, subtract 138. And therefore, A is going to equal a 42 degrees. And again, you can plug it in, right? And then just go ahead and check it out. But I think that is like the most basic understanding that students need to know about um, finding the angle of a triangle. All right, the next one is actually going to be one where we are now going to have a right triangle. Now, right triangle is something that I always kind of tell students to like have your alarms out. Whenever you see a right triangle, you should automatically think two things. One, the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, but that's for sides, so that's not helping us here. The next thing is going to be your trigonometric functions. Sine squared plus cosine squared. I'm not sine squared plus cosine squared, uh, but sine, cosine, and tangent, all right? Or at least from those three basic ones. Now, a couple things also to keep in mind. When you are dealing with anything that involves a right triangle, make sure that you know it's a right triangle. Make sure there's a 90 degree or that you have this little box here. We don't want to assume something's 90 degrees um, because then we could get the problem wrong, all right? Now, in this example, we have 90 degrees. That's the only known angle, but I'm not gonna give you another angle like the last example. Now I'm gonna give you two side lengths, okay? Now there's two different ways we could do this problem. One, we could do this problem if we have a knowledge of special right triangles. The other way we could do this is with our trigon uh, with, is with using our trigonometric functions. And again, what is my missing angle? Sorry about that. Our missing angle in this case is gonna be A. So what are our special right triangles? And again, how do we use them to be able to solve for this? Well, special right triangles are going to be um, two right triangles that have a relationship between their sides that their angles are going to be known, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use the variable X to represent the relationships between the sides. So if you have what we call a short leg is X, the long leg would be X squared of three, and then the hypotenuse here is going to be a two X. This is what we call a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we have, sorry, that's the wrong one. That's 60 degrees. That's the bigger angle, right? So we have 60, 90, and this one would be 30 angle. The other rest special right triangle is what we call the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And that one we can tell because it has 90 degrees, but the two legs are going to be equal. So it's like X, X, and then X squared to two, okay? So again, the legs of a right triangle are gonna be what makes up the 90 degrees. So what I want you to do in this example, see, hey, <laughs> The two legs are not exactly the same. So it's not a 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? So sorry, this is 45, that one's 45. So maybe it has a relationship of the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And again, if you look at this, it's like whatever the short leg is to get to the other long leg, you just multiply by a square root of three. And you're like, yes, it is that, right? Now this one's orientated a little bit differently. It's flipped on the side, but hopefully, you're right. hopefully it kind of makes sense here that this angle is smaller than that angle. So therefore this one is gonna be my 30 degrees, and this one's gonna be my larger one, which A is going to equal A theory degrees. Now, what if you're like, I do not remember special right triangles. I don't know what even to do with that. Um, what else could I do? Well, the other thing you could do is look at your trigonometric functions. So remember, whatever is directly across from your uh, 90 degree angle is what we call our hypotenuse, okay? Whatever angle or whatever side length that is between your right angle and your, um, and your subject angle is gonna be what we call our adjacent side. And whatever side length is directly across from the right triangle is what we're gonna call our opposite side. All right, now we have our six trigonometric functions and we're just gonna focus on three of them though, which is gonna be the sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine of an angle, of any angle, okay, is going to be your opposite over your hypotenuse. The cosine of an angle is going to be your adjacent over your hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle 
is going to be the relationship of the opposite over the adjacent. Okay. So what we need to do is say, all right, which of these trigonometric functions could we use to help us solve for A? And what we got to do is just look at, well, what side lengths do we have? We have the opposite and we have the adjacent side. So if you look at this, you say, oh, I have opposite adjacent. So I can write a relationship here. I can say tangent of A is equal to my opposite side, which is three, all over my adjacent side, which is three, squared of three. Okay. Now, again, you could simplify this or you could use your calculator. If you're really good with the unit circle, you might be able to do this um, all up on your own. But again, it doesn't really matter. We already know the answer is 30 degrees, right, guys? Um, but anyways, how do you solve for this? Like, what do you do? What do you type in your calculator if you don't know these angles, right? So first thing we need to understand is if I need to solve for tangent, I need to, or A, I'm sorry, I need to undo tangent, right? Now, undo multiplication by dividing. How do you undo tangent? What you're going to do is you're going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. So I'll do the inverse tangent of tangent of A is equal to, let's just simplify, you know, let's, yeah, let's simplify this to one over square root of three, right? Divide out the threes. And then you can say A is equal to, oops, I'm sorry. Forgot to write that. You got to take the tangent inverse of both sides, right? So it'd be a tangent inverse of one over square root of three. Oh, come on. Run out of space here. There you go. Okay. And now I could say A is equal to the tangent inverse of one over square root of three, which again, guys, well, we already know what the answer is. A is going to equal a 30 degrees. So we're good to go there. Okay. Um, but again, hopefully you recognize that. And, but if not, that's what you type in your calculator, tangent inverse of one over square root of three. And guess what? Try it. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, but when you go and do it, you're going to see the answer is a, uh, which is 30 degrees. Sorry. All right. Last example here. And this one's going to be a good one. So in this case, what if I have, here's my triangle. I'm going to call, this is my A. I'm going to call this one 50 degrees. No, no, sorry. This one is going to be 50 degrees. Here's my angle A. This would be 10 and this is 12. Okay. Now, if I want to solve for A, the reason why this is hard, guys, gentlemen, because we don't have enough information. One, we don't have a right triangle, okay? Um, so we don't have a right triangle. We only have one angle, so that's not enough information, right? If we had two angles, we'd be good. Um, but we only have one angle. But it's not a right triangle, so I can't use what I did before. And um, what I want you to recognize also is this is side-side angle. So for those of you that have been in trig past the right triangle, you know that this is the ambiguous case. This is what people hate about the ambiguous case. Because the problem with this is there's actually a possibility of not having enough information to draw actually two triangles. So you could have this triangle, right, which would be A, but we could also draw this triangle to look like this. We just don't have enough information, right? We know A, we know this 50 degrees is fixed. We know this 12 is fixed. We know the 10 is fixed, but it could also look like this. And we can call that A2, right? Because again, what could happen here the way that this works is, see how that could work? It could swing either way. We don't have enough information. So if we're going to call this A1 or here, but I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be the case. So what we're going to do to be able to identify this is we need to use the law of signs first to be able to check this out. Okay. So let's just use A1 for this example and see if there, um, now there could only be one example. It could be only be one case or it could be no cases. Like just giving you angle side, side angle does not give you enough information to tell you from the back. So what we need to do to be able to solve for this is use the law of signs. Now, again, remember the law of signs basically says the ratio or the comparison of the sine of an angle to its side length is equal to the sine of an angle to all the other um, side lengths. So what I mean by that is I can write this as the sine of eight, A1, all over 12. Okay. So the sine of the angle to its opposing side length, right? So this would be, if that's big A, then this would be side length A. If this is my angle B, then this would be my little b. Okay. That's going to be equal then to the sine of 50 degrees all over little b, which would be 10. Okay. Now I can apply my cross product to go ahead and so well, actually I don't need to apply my cross product. I just need to multiply the 12 to get that off there. So I have the sine of A1 is equal to 12 sine of 50 divided by 10. Okay. And again, just like we did here, if I want to undo the sign here, I'm going to say a one here is going to equal to the sine inverse of 12 sine of 50 divided by 10. It's a lot. Okay. Now we are going to have to use our calculator on this one. Um, there's no way of kind of getting around this. So I'm going to do sine of 50 
um, times 12 divided by 10. And then I'm going to do sine inverse of that answer. And then to do that, I get my A1 is equal to a 66.817 degrees. I'm just going to do two thousandths and then I'm going to truncate it. Okay. All right. Now, here's what we want to look at. Okay. If we want to find A2, what I want you to recognize is A1 and A2 are what we call complementary angles. Okay. Um, so technically, if this is A1, then that could be A1. So the, the sum of A1 and A2, not complementary, sorry, supplementary angles. So the, so the sum of A1 plus A2 is going to be 180, meaning if I want to find A2, I'm going to take 180 degrees minus A1. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 180 degrees and I'm going to subtract it from the full answer. I'm not going to type in um, all that. I'm actually going to use the full answer. And that's going to give me 113.182. Um, and again, I'm truncating everything. I'm not rounding. Now, a lot of times we don't know if A2 exists or not. Okay. For instance, let me give you an example. If A2 was 140 degrees, it would not exist. Because if I was going to say this angle is 140 degrees, which is obtuse, well, 140 plus 50 is 190. That's already over all the angles in the triangle. So that would not work. But in this case, I have A2 is equal to 113 degrees. 113 plus 50 would be 163. I still have a little bit of a triangle here, right? I could have a triangle that would be like 17 degrees. So in this example, guys, I actually have two triangles, right? So I have an A1 that could be 66.817 degrees as well as another triangle where my A2 could be 113.182. So there's a lot that to kind of unpack with this. And again, but hopefully you understand here from the most basic to this most difficult type of problem, how to find the missing angle of a triangle. If you want more examples, then go ahead and check out the examples I have for you down below. But if you gain some value, then I hope you can enjoy the next video I have for you here. Cheers.